Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs. How's it going? How's it going? Sorry, I'm two minutes late. I was, um, I'm trying to be, uh, a little more technical, trying to, um, pull off the, the, um, improve the technical aspects of the stream, if you will. So as you can see, now I am in a, <laughs> now I'm in a, in a, in a little bubble, uh, in a green screen. And if I put my arms out here, they disappear. Hey guys, how are we? He's alive. He is alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's gone. I actually, um, I wanted this to be like a, a slideshow where it was running pictures of uh, ocean liners in the background. But uh, so far that's proving a little bit beyond my technical proficiency. Hey guys, how are we all? Look at this. Everyone's saying hi. How are you? Hello, 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 hello. Shipster, we got Annabelle. Hey, we got uh, Crown Bird. So many different people. Blue Fire says Dapple, da Dapple, young, Dapper Young Gentleman. Thank you. <laughs> Looking dapper. Thanks, guys. Yeah, this is my, this is a summery kind of, kind of suit. And um, what I, uh, what I especially like about this, this thing, this whole getup. Oh, it's a bit laggy. You know, I think I might know what's going on here. I'm just going to like uh, try and just around with this real quick. Um, I'll show you guys something in a sec. A um, really good friend of mine. Is it still laggy for you guys? Let me know. Let me know if it kind of like chills out now, now that we're, now that I've just turned that off, that was going on in the background. Um, this just goes real well with my, uh, with my Boda hat. This was a present, this was a gift from a friend of mine in Pennsylvania. She sent it over and uh, I've had it for a couple of years. And um, I thought it made me look like Jay Gatsby, but I think it really just makes me look like a used car salesman from 1954. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, this is Buddy the Elf's first stream. Good to have you here, man. How are you? I'd enjoy the old background and love the suit. Yeah, the old background's good. Let's, uh, you know, change it up a little bit. What do you think? Some dry toast. Do a drinking game. <laughs> I do have my coffee here. So that, that, um, that hat is real cool because it was, uh, it's pretty old. The company that manufactured them went out of business in 1938. So, you know, it's the real deal. What are we all, uh, what are we all up to guys? Hope you've all had a good weekend. Um, what I actually wanted to do originally was show you all, um, how I animate my ships. Um, oh, I've accidentally moved the bounding box all the way up there. We'll put that back down there where it belongs. Um, I wanted to, oh, Chelsea's laughing about the hat. Hey Chelsea. Wow. Chelsea actually made a stream. Amazing. Delta Bravo Tango. I do see this message. I do. Um, I was going to say, uh, uh, no, I've, I've, I've forgotten. I've forgotten what I was going to say. I was going to say something, something interesting. Change the background to the ship masterpiece from the last stream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good, good, good point. I should do that actually. I turn my volume down so it doesn't deafen me. Um, oh, we had, uh, KS, KSC Gamed has joined the, uh, the YouTube membership program. Good to have you here. Thank you very much. Adrian Menino, what about me? I see you, man. I see you. Oh, Alexius, another coffee tip for you, big man. Hey, here's to you, pal. Thank you. Mm. That was the first thing I did when I moved into my uh, my apartment here was was get a coffee machine so I can just wake up, make myself espresso, start my day. Chat be flying. I know. It's going off. Um, it's getting near Christmas. I can't believe it. You know, like I've got so much work still to do. I've got so many videos to put out for you guys. I think you're going to really like the next one that's coming out. Um, here is a, uh, a trivia question for you while I read through these super chats. A video that I've got coming out in the next couple of weeks. There was a maritime disaster that happened um, after 1950 on Christmas Day. Let's see if anyone knows the name of the ship that uh, ran into this problem on Christmas Day after 1950. Uh, notification. There's like three eyes in there. Notification says, Hey Mike, love your channel. Love your style. Uh, it's interesting subject matter and your passion for it shows. Keep it coming. Thank you, my friend. Really appreciate it. I, I do love my history. I started a second channel, uh, simply called Mike Brady because there's a lot of videos I want to make about things like, for example, the boater hat. There's, there's like the, the, the jauntiest, you know, bit of history behind that hat. There was a riot um, because back in the day, um, you could really only wear these in society um, in springtime or summer. 
and it was like tradition to go out and buy yourself a new boater hat every every spring and summer which i'm sure the hat manufacturers loved but then one time i think in the early 20s uh there was a whole bunch of men just walking around wearing them the first day of autumn and there was an actual riot there were people running around with sticks smashing boaters off of other guys heads and it just devolved very interesting thank you very much for your uh, for your ten dollar tip man appreciate it thomas thomas uh colato says um that five euro tip thank you very much if you can board any vessel uh, any vessel throughout history first class on board <sighs> gee what ship would it be oh any vessel first class um for pure uh, this is going to watch the chat explode now but for pure insanity of the experience of first class um and because i'm a little bit of a francophile i'm going to say the normandy on her maiden voyage first class I think the, the mood on board was, was awesome when they captured the blue ribbon and they knew they'd, you know, beat, um, the, the Rex's record and they had that huge blue, um, streamer flying and I don't know, there's something really, uh, evocative about it, but also I love 1930s French, French culture. So definitely the Normandy for me. What about you, Thomas? What would you say, Alon? Wait, did the stream end? What's going on? The stream is still going. Is why what's going on? Is it is it playing up? Yeah, maybe you need to refresh. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on. I, this could be like an internet thing. Oh, I hope it's not um not still playing up. Let me know. It's not a live stream without technical difficulties. Yeah, we just lost like a hundred listeners in like a second. Oh, you're kidding. Oh man, what's going on? So annoying. Good choice. I'd go with the Queen Mary. Yeah, this is real funny. It's it's dropping um it's dropping frames and things. I just don't know why. That's really weird. T how typical is this? I've done this a million times, right? Stream's still going. Guys, the stream is the stream is definitely still going. I'm sitting here talking to myself apparently. <laughs> RMS Oceanic. Hey Mike, how's it going? Send Fr says Francis. Yeah, the text playing up a bit. Typical. So typical. Um, okay. A few of you are saying it's, it's playing up. Maybe just refresh it. And then, you know, if it, if it keeps playing up, then maybe I'll have to restart it or something. I don't know. Uh, Erica Itsumi says, good evening, my good sir. Love the suits. Also, uh, thank you very much. Even though I look like a used car salesman. Also, do you uh, think they should, uh, add RMS Olympic to World Warships as an April Fool's ship in a dazzle scheme? Yeah, I, um... <laughs> I was thinking about this ages ago. It would be very funny, uh, like a boss battle type game mode where you defend the, the the boss on your team. The boss on your team is in the Yamato. Oh, sorry, the Yamato is in the Olympic, but it's at like tier two and the Olympic has got the same health power, you know, the health points as the Yamato in tier 10, but it's just those little six inch pea shooters. And then your team around you is just in destroyers and they have to protect the Olympic. Um, I thought that could be a lot of fun. Get the SS Mike Brady is the green screen background. Yeah, the, the SS Mike Brady. Why don't we do that again? I was going to say, so um, basically what's happened is, uh, remember last week, Q flashback now, where I wanted to show you guys how I animate my, my ships. I was going to like do this whole thing. And then once again, um, I was beset with technical difficulties because this new computer that I bought specifically to be able to uh, stream to you guys and show you how I how I uh, sync my ships and how I animate them um, stopped working. So I took it back to the shop the next day um, and it turned out there was actually a broken, you know, it was a faulty computer, faulty hardware. So anyway, got it all fixed up. Wanted to show you again today how I animate them, but now my my program is is playing up. <laughs> this is all, this is all, uh, it's, it's all, it's so typical. I don't think anyone's figured out the uh, the name of the ship the name of the ship that was um, that was sunk just around Christmas. I don't want to give the year. I don't want to give you the year either because it'll just give it away. Edward France says, you are walking through the Queen Mary's hallways when you hear a voice behind you. Your last moments are spent hearing the words, hi, it's Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs. <laughs> Never gets old. Hello, Mike. Just joined the stream, says Gavin. I had to give a speech in a university class and I did it. Oh, and the Empress of Ireland, your video helped so much. Very cool. Very cool. I'm glad it helped. Yeah, it's an interesting story, man. Not many, obviously not many people know it. I hope the, um, I hope the students liked it. 
tube tub of dingus tub of dingus said third time asking mike brady to notice me consider yourself noticed sick man australian uh strathnava anzac three villages along bc 97 in central british columbia canada i know way off topic strath strathnava anzac three villages along bc 97 in central british columbia canada i got a few buddies in uh, in bc a nice little part of the world uh, the U87 sunk around Christmas Day. Not a warship. This happened in peacetime after 1950. But good, good guess. Some dry toast says, I think you should take a ship from your terrible makeovers video and do your own makeover of it. They, hey, that's not a bad idea, huh? All right. Listen. Why don't you guys... Oh, Shipster got it. Shipster 1941 is the Laconia. Yes. It is the Laconia. I'm doing a video on the former Johan van Olden Barnevelt 1, not to be confused with Johan van Olden Barnevelt 2. And what I was about to say, well done, you win a, you win a, um, a, a coffee cheers. Um, dumbest reviews, Mike, Mike, no, notice me. Artie Chard, witness me. All right, I'm, I'm noticing you all. I see you, I see you. Um, what I was about to say was, why don't you guys think up a ship from my bad ship makeovers video and then maybe we can zhuzh it up, have a little play with it and see if we can make it look better live. Tell me which one to do. I can, I'm sure it's going to be Hellenic Prince. I'm sure you'd love to see me try and fix that mess up. There it is. Already Hellenic Prince. <laughs> Miscellaneous. Hi, Mike. I live on the peninsula on the Isle of Skye. Uh, that the Strathaird is named after. Oh, so nice. That's cool. Um, oh, well, actually, while, while you're mulling that over, um, I wonder if any of you could guess the name of the, the, the ship behind me. This, there's not much detail to go on there. That would be that would be impressive if anyone. Chelsea Pinkard, better notice me, bro. In full caps. <laughs> I got dinner with Chelsea last night. <laughs> noticed. I noticed you last night, and I noticed you now, Chelsea. Hello. For those of you who uh, may remember, Chelsea was on the channel once, and we uh, we made a video together about Edith Bowerman and Elsie Bowerman, and um, a few of the suffragettes on board the Titanic. It's a very interesting video. Different to the kind of usual stuff I make, but it was, I thought it was real good. Edward France, what about the Strathnova? The, the ship? I lo I lo oh, I love it. Yeah, she's my, she's, she's my favourite. Erica Itsumi says the kitchen knife. So the ship in the background here is not the Titanic. It's not the United States. It's not Normandy. It's not... Um, Olympic. It's not Stockholm or Astoria. Is its name Jeff? <laughs> yes, it was the Jeff. How did you know? <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh, the sketchy dude 13 says, do not notice me, Mike. I will drown you in cursed Japanese ferries. Consider yourself not noticed. Johan van Olden Barnevelt. It's not the Johan van Olden Barnevelt. Keep it up. I'll give you. Um, I'll give you a clue. It's not Lusitania. Um, Albiadam. Al Al Albiadam. Albiadam. Frankly, my dear, I don't Albiadam. Says uh, saw your videos earlier, and I say bring back the neck. I'm all about the tie now. I'm all about the tie. <laughs> I'm all about looking like I'm about to sell you a used car. At some point in in the in the recent past. You there, sir. You look like you could use the 1979 Cadillac Coup de Ville. <laughs> well, how about the Lincoln Continental? It's the newest thing on four wheels. Is the new Amsterdam? No, it's not the Georgic. No, it's not the Aquitania. Not the Levith Le Leviathan. Leviathan. That's why I need to drink more coffee. Leviathan. Couldn't, you couldn't even get the word right. It's not the Imperator. All right, I'm going to um, give you another clue. There's a two funnel liner. She has a two funnel liner, as you can see. We're gonna leave it there. We're gonna leave it there. This is actually fun. This is a good game. We should do this uh, every stream. See if you guys can guess the name of the ship. It's not the Berengaria. I will give you a, a clue at some point. If no one's kind of figured this out by 10 o'clock, I'll give you a clue. Uh, sorry, my 10 o'clock on the hour in 10 minutes. Nope, I'm gonna I will keep looking at what, what's coming on. Um, and let you know what, uh, what they're saying. Oh, oh, so I'll let you know what the, what the ship is. Um, Pedden Harley. Hello, Pedden. He says, uh, Mike, my, my grandmother was on board MS Prince Dam when she was burned and sank off Alaska in 1980. 
I'd love to hear your treatment of the uh, of the incident. MS, uh, is it Prince and Dam? Sorry, I mispronounced that. Prince and Dam. Oh man, that's uh, that's a cool story. I would love to. Uh, I'd love to cover that. That's a really interesting story. I um, look. I don't really know much about the disaster. I'd, I'd have to look it up and, and do some research. But yeah, definitely, definitely. That's the kind of maritime disaster I'd love to do a love to do a video video about. Okay, as far as I can see, no one has um, picked this out yet. Um, Peyton, and sorry if I'm saying your, your name wrong, I'm going to uh, look into that because again, I love that whole thing of like uh, kind of more unknown to the general public maritime disasters, even if, even if, you know, they're, they're not on the scale of like your Wilhelm Gustloffs or Titanics. No one's got it yet. No one's, <laughs> Admiral Scrub slaps cover off lifeboat. This bad boy was testing to Belfast with over 70 men. That's right. You too could be lowered over the side of a ship safely. With the Wellen Quadrant Davit. <laughs> Stephen Hemingway. Oh, Stephen. Stephen, 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 Stephen. Listen, listen. At the risk of being lynched, I think the SS Oriana of 1960 is in need of a makeover. It looks like the decks were cut off. Stephen. Just because it has two funnels of mis mismatched height <laughs> and just because the superstructure is in eight different pieces, and just because the stern is like a 15 story tall layer cake gallery. Actually, no, you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe it does need a little, a little zhuzh. Uh, KSC Gamed says, uh, don't want to be repetitive, but where can I find the link to the members discord? Um, I don't know. I don't really know, to be honest. I know this is my, <laughs> it's my discord. I have no idea. I will post a link after this stream on, on YouTube for everybody to join the discord and Come join the madness. <laughs> uh, Tom of Dingus says, Mike, what is your favorite White Star Line ship aside from any in the Olympic class? Mm, probably the ones that came to Australia. The, um, the, uh, the, the uh, Jubilee class. Sorry, I had to, my brain had to kick into gear there for a second. Yeah, the Jubilee class are my, are my favorite. Those are super cool. Photographs of them in Station Pier in Melbourne. You know, where if I was born 100 years earlier, I would have been able to stand and watch them come in. Majestic, Georgic, or Bremen. It's not one of those. It's not one of those. See if I can um, give you a clue in a minute. Keep it up. Keep it up. Oh, Alexius just posted a link to the Discord. There we go. Thanks, Alexius. JMF says, Hi, Mike. No idea if you will see this, but I've been enjoying your videos for a while now. I'm a 3D artist and game dev. Would you be interested in any help with your renders? Voluntarily, of course. Thank you very much. I, um... Look, the, um... The, the... The animations and things, um, I still love doing myself. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, all of the videos that I've been putting out the last few weeks, it's still mostly all me. I, the help that I get from an editor is if I record the voiceover, so I write my script, record the voiceover and send it to him, and then he cuts out the bits where I'm like, um, ah, uh, and then trip over the words that I'm saying. One day I'll give you a, a script that I read all the way through and you'll laugh at how often I, I mess up. And then um, he gives that back to me. And then I start layering the photographs and the footage on top. And then I animate. And I love having that kind of creative control over how the video turns out. It's going to be hard to learn to give that over to somebody else to do. Because all those little nuanced moments in some of my videos where yeah, I want you to feel something. Like um, that were people trapped in the Titanic video. There was a woman I was talking about. She sat down with her child and played the piano. And that just had like this little snippet of an echoey version of... Um, the Ragtime Dance by Scott Joplin or The Easy Winners, one of those two. Um, just that little bit of ragtime just for a moment and then it fades into nothing and it creates like a spooky, evocative feeling. And um, I love thinking like a filmmaker when I make these videos. And my biggest inspiration is, is James Cameron. I mean, the Ghost of the Abyss documentary, which I saw when I was really young, was a game changer. The way he has, you know, these ghostly figures of people walking around the ship and reenacting events that actually happened. So um, that's, that's kind of where I'm coming at it from. So I love doing it all myself and, um, I think I'll continue to do so, but I really appreciate your offer. And certainly if I took on an, an animator, they're being paid. No one's doing, doing any of it voluntarily. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> what a great YouTube name. Fraggle Schnaggle. Fraggle Schnaggle? Fraggle Schnaggle. It's delightful. It says first donation on YouTube ever. Love the content. Thank you very much. That deserves a little, that deserves a cheers. Thank you. 
Someone is selling an original window from Olympics Grand Staircase. St staircase. This is what happens when I read my script. That's why the editor is so busy. Did you see someone is selling an original window from Olympics Grand Staircase on eBay? No. Oh man, there was a, there was a whole chunk of the Grand the uh, Grand Staircase paneling that someone sold recently. The SSSS. No, this is not the SSSS. No one's no one's yet got the name of the ship. I don't think. Don Beery has given ten dollars and says, "Just watched your thoughts on the sinking of the Titanic and how it was so dark that it was far from being visible." Subscribe. Thanks, Don. Welcome aboard. Good to have you, and thanks for your uh, thanks for your tip. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, people brought up a really good point. They said, you know, the Titanic sank, but in darkness, but human eyes can adjust to the light. And that, that's a really good point. It's totally true. At different rates, you know, depending on how old you are, whatever. But the lights have been burning bright. And it's gradually fading and fading. But I think in that kind of darkness, that as soon as they snapped out, your, light, your, your eyes now have to adjust to this, to this darkness. So I don't think um, people would have been having had that great night vision that some people might assume. Like the iceberg. I mean, they, they, the clue is in the fact that we already know what the iceberg looked like to the crew, which was just a, a, a lack of stars on the horizon, just for a moment. Probably what Titanic would have looked like. So I was always so skeptical about a lot of the, um, a lot of eyewitness claims about certain things they saw, like from all the way back there, I could see my dog, you know, I think Madeline Astor said something like that. It may be true. I mean, it's woe, woe be me to um, trash survivor tales, but I just know as well because of the media of the time, a lot of these stories got passed down the line and corrupted. So you have got to take everything with a bit of a grain of salt. Um, Erica Itsumi says, can you do a video? And what if Titanic's list during the sinking had caused the ship to capsize and how that could have increased the loss of life? Yeah, it's an interesting one. I think um, I think there would have been, um, yeah, significantly more deaths. There's nothing scarier, in my opinion, than a ship rolling on, on its side and, and capsizing. Um, because, you know, the, look in your room right now, right? And imagine it upside down. Now imagine you have to get out. But imagine it was up on its side, even. You know, the doorway out of this room is over there and that's now on the roof you know i'm tall i'm six foot five but that's about 15 feet away 12 feet away so i'm not getting there you know so that's that's some scary stuff uh it's not the awatea it's not not the awatea <laughs> trust me i'm a failure says make a patreon <laughs> i've already got a patreon patreon.com slash ocean line of design go check it out uh, and I will pay $15 a month to see you reading your scripts unedited. Maybe I will do that. I, I, don't, I don't even know what my patrons like to like to see. So I guess I will I, I will post something like that. It's not the Queen Elizabeth or the Awatea. Those are good guesses. This is, it's not the Mauritania too. Rick Grimes, 42 here. Yeah, I'm, I'm like the budget 42. It's good though. He's got a moustache now. So now people can tell us apart. <laughs> it's not Elle de France, it's not the it's not the Orangi, it's not the Homeric, it's not the Mauritania too. Hi Mike. Uh Nico Insta in Nico E Nista, sorry, says make Mike, will you make a video on the Conte de Savoia? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um you know it's interesting, like there's a lot of ship history out there and a lot of the stories about ships I've noticed it in the videos I make. I'll make something on disaster at sea, you know, like the sinking of the Titanic or the Lusitania. And it'll get tens of thousands of views. But I make one about a ship that didn't run into any danger. And it gets like, in its first day, it'll, you know, it'll get like a tenth the amount of attention. People just aren't as interested. I mean, it's quite funny. I can't, I love the ocean liners, but I'm not just out to make like straight retellings of histories of, of ships' careers, even though they're fascinating. I want to kind of tell really gripping stories about the, the ones that didn't make it, I guess the disasters. Cause I think that's what, that's what people are really keen to, to hear unless you're a, like died in the wool ship nerd, you know? And um, like, I could easily make a video rattling off the history of, 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 well, I've already done videos like, you know, um, Lloyd Triestino, for example. And that was like a passion project cause I'm interested in it. Not because I th thought the general public would enjoy it. So yeah, you got to balance like the videos you want to make with the videos you think people want to watch. It can be, it can be tricky. Ryan Weasley has upgraded his membership to the bosun category on YouTube. Welcome aboard, Ryan. Good to have you, my friend. Thank you very much. 
Uh, Excellente Music says, I take one big guess and call it the RMS Espresso. <laughs> it's, it's creative. I like it. Um, I also challenge you to do a documentary on the SS Edmund Fitzgerald. I've been challenged. I've been challenged to do a documentary on the Edmund, Fitz, Edmund Fitzgerald. All right. Okay. All right. I can do that. Yeah, I'd love to animate the whole thing, show it sinking graphically. It's a very interesting, very interesting story. Transit Biker says, this is definitely a P&O ship. That's interesting. Uh, why do you say that? What is it about this that gives you P&O ship vibes? Very interesting. SS, yeah, the SS Giga Chad. <laughs> I am Boat. It is not the Queen Elizabeth. I'm sorry. I hate to tell you. Jennifer Kruger, notice me, notice me. It is not the, uh, <laughs> this is really stumped you guys. Hey, it's not the Sea Diamond. It's not the Empress of Ireland. It's not the Stockholm. The SS Saul Goodman. Unironically. So I just finished watching uh, Breaking Bad for the first time. I love the theme song. There's an extended version of it on the internet and I, I play it often. Tracy A says, hi, Mike. Hi, Tracy. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Ryan's saying, wait, what are we guessing? We're guessing uh, what ship is in the background in the blueprints here, the name of the ship. And um, I think it's kind of stumped everyone. Daniel says the Viceroy of India. No, it's not the Viceroy of India. We got a super chat from uh, Thomas again. He says, appreciate the content. Um, as someone who's quite new to the channel, would you talk more about yourself and how your interest in maritime history came about? Cheers. Yeah, um, I'll... I'll do that. I'll keep an eye on um, on the names of these ships as they're coming through. There's good names, but they're not right. J Jelly says the SS noticed me, Mike. <laughs> keep it up. I'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, the um, the the story of how I became a ship nerd is long and and complex and convoluted, and it begins all the way back in July 1959. Actually, it does when uh, when my dad arrived in Australia. On the Strath uh, Strathnava, sorry, he came to Australia on the Strathnava in 1959, and as a as a kid, I guess he was obsessed with ships as well. So when I was growing up, I was born, uh, you know, around 95. The Titanic movie comes out. There's all these great documentaries around about the Titanic. I was obsessed with the music, and I just started, uh, I guess, you know, reading as much as I could about the Titanic, especially. The Titanic was like the gateway drug into the world of maritime history and that's why i've always said people say things like oh you know you make too many videos about the titanic but if you can understand how the titanic was built and operated you can understand how every ship from that era was was built and operated you know so yeah that's kind of like a condensed version of, of how i got here but i may i may make a video like a hundred thousand subscriber special on how i got here and how i you know why i draw things and how i've been doing it because i've actually been doing things like this i'm drawing um, those ships and things like that since about 2005 or 20, 2006. Stephen Hemingway. Yeah. How about doing a presentation on the, uh, the Batori and the children it brought to safety. Uh, my mother's cousins came over on it. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the singing ship. So Batori was uh, one of two sister ships um, or brother ships, I guess, alongside uh, the Pilsudski and um, built in the thirties, just before the second world war. Uh, in in Britain, I believe. Oh no, sorry, in Italy, they're Italian built for the uh, Polish uh, Polish lines, uh, Gdynia America line, or Gdynia, sorry, Gdynia America line, and Batory survived the war, but Pilsudski did not, and it's a very interesting story. But this was part of that whole thing where they were trying to evacuate children to you know the the you know Australia or wherever they could get them. And um, that ended in, in tragedy when I think one or a few ships were sunk carrying nothing but kids, but uh, Batori survived. And then um, after the war became part of, you know, the, the whole Eastern Bloc and it changed a lot in the 30s. It seems like it was a luxurious, beautiful liner to be on. But then post-World War II in the 50s and 60s and onwards, it was like most of Eastern Europe became quite a, quite a different uh, experience, right? Viceroy of Malta, the SS Breaking Bad. No, it's not the SS Breaking Bad. Do you want a hint? I'll give you a hint. Let me let me just see. Let me just make sure I haven't I haven't missed anything. I want to make sure no one's. Someone may have actually already said the name of this ship, and I I could have missed it. I could have missed it because we've got we've got uh, we've got too many super chats coming through. The Highland Batman is now just singing the Titanic theme song. 
Erica Itsumi, what do you think of Tim Moulton's theory on the events of the night with the cold water mirage hiding the icebergs, the lights being scrambled? Yeah, I mean, you know, look, people rush to uh, to explain a lot of things. I try not to get too bogged down in, in the details. It's actually why I, ha <clears throat> excuse me, it's why I haven't uh, made a Titanic breakup theory video. Because to be entirely honest with you, I don't really care enough. Um, I do you know, I'm interested in, in the, the sinking, obviously, and the breakup, but agonizing over which part failed when exactly and why, and the double bottom fell out, and it just, first of all, seems like a pointless exercise. Second of all, people get too caught up in, I think, the, the, the over-analysis of certain things, which is funny coming from me, because I'm like, here are the, the rivets in Titanic's funnels, and here's the thickness of the metal used on Titanic's funnels. Um the breakup, it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, there are so many examples of ships that have broken. Um, sorry, I've just gone into a, into a rant now, but I will come back to your original question. So many examples of ships that have broken. It's a very nice, clean break. And, you know, kind of, I, I don't know. I would, I would hate to kind of like make a 40 minute long video agonizing over, you know, and then at exactly 2.18 and 45 seconds AM, the double bottom collapsed out and then, you know, it's just not really my, my, my thing. I'm I, I'm planning on making a video called something like "What did Titanic's breakup look like?" I know I already made a video called that, but something like that, talking about other ships that have broken in half and what we can learn from them, because there's tons. There's actually a lot more than you'd expect. Um, Tim Moulton, I think I really respect him. I think he wrote um, "101 Things You Thought You Knew About the Titanic But Didn't," which was a great book. Has got some really interesting myth busting in it. So. I, I would buy into it, but I also think that people really bring out the, um, the magnifying glass and try and, I think I do have a magnifying glass around here somewhere, um, and then try and find things. I'm not really necessarily accusing Tim of doing it, but um, I think a lot, of, a lot of authors do just to sell books. I don't necessarily think Tim's one of them. I think he really knows his stuff. Um, I, I hope I'm not missing any of these super chats, gee. Wait, Erica, I'm going to give you a clue after I answer this, uh, uh, answer this super, super chat. Uh, Ferrisine Dealer says, hi, Mike, new subscriber here. Just wanted to ask if you could do a one hour documentary on anything. Uh, what would it be? A one hour documentary. I may yet. I want to make longer videos. Um, on it, literally anything non-ship related. I started writing a documentary about my granddad's uh, military service. He was in the Leicestershire Regiment and their, um, their entire battle experience was absolutely insane in world war ii they're in normandy and then belgium and holland and it's it's kind of like the british band of brothers i don't know if you've ever seen that show but it's just unbelievable stuff i'd love to write, finish that documentary and I, if i do i'll put it up on the mike brady channel fascinating history if i could make an hour-long documentary about any ship and um, i would love to do an hour long like a beautifully animated tons of real footage on I'm going to say the history of liners. Yeah, it's going to be close to my heart. The history of liners out to the, you know, the Far Eastern services, how people got to this country in Australia is fascinating. You know, like the quality of service from 1850 to 1950. That's a hundred years. But if you were sailing on a ship in 1850, there was like a good chance you just weren't ever going to show up, that your ship would just disappear at sea. You know, so it's just a fascinating, fascinating bit of history. So one of those for sure. Good morning, uh, Birkenhead says, where did the poo go on the Titanic? Was there a giant septic tank or did it all get pumped out to the sea? If so, uh, where was the poo expulsion zone? So if you ever looked along uh, the hull of the Titanic around about the waterline, you'll see thousands of tiny, tiny holes called scuppers. And um, essentially what these are are just drainage ports for all of the showers and sinks and wash basins um, throughout the Titanic, including the toilets. So it meant that um, for, for the longest time, even into the 50s, my dad remembers this, liners would tie up at Station Pier in Melbourne or harbours around the world. And um, if they didn't close the scuppers or anything, the, they would just drain straight out the side. So if you were swimming in Port Phillip Bay here in Melbourne, um, you might find yourself swimming in excrement at certain, certain points. There were some liners that stopped doing that, but certain others, uh, which just kept up the practice. So yeah, in Titanic, all the toilets drained straight into the ocean. There was no septic tank or anything like that. Nowadays, that's um, that's obviously a big no-no. But that's that's a good question. 
Okay, I don't think anyone's anyone's got this yet. Jared Quinn has joined the Ocean Liner Designs YouTube membership. Good to have you, my friend. Welcome, welcome. Mm. Cheers to you. RMS Mauritania says RMS uh, Multan. Multan is actually a good guess, but it is not. Why don't we go a little further forward? I don't know if any of this is going to give it away. There's a nice little... That's what she looks like. I'm going to give you a fly past. I'm, I'm going to go right down the middle. I'm going to show you the ship's profile. All right, you ready? Here we go. Okay, first funnel. Second funnel. Now this should give it away. The stern profile should give this away. All right, you ready? She's got a cruise astern. But she's got a writing room. Someone just to correctly point it out, this ship has a writing room. They went out of fashion um, pre-World War II, says Michael McLeod. That is good detective work. Erica Itsumi, um, Graf Zeppelin, airship or aircraft carrier. How about both? Hint, hint. Airship uh, or aircraft carrier. One of both. Why not? Yeah, no, I'd love to do one on the... Um, on, on both of those ships, the, the aircraft carrier that was never built. Again, like a lot of these topics have already been very well covered on the internet. It just drives me nuts. I'm loving seeing this coming up. All the que all the answers. You guys are, you're doing good. And as soon as someone gets this, then we're going to go and um, maybe edit and fix up one of the ships uh, on Photoshop like we did last week, because that was fun. Um, I'm definitely going to do videos on the airships, Erica. Yeah, the, uh, the Graf Zeppelin is definitely up there. All right, so do you want me to give this away? Because you guys are getting so close. Some of you are getting very, very close, but just kind of like skirting around it. One of you, I think, has got the closest so far. There's one in particular. Um, I'm going to say Daniel Huffman has got very, very close a couple times, and I want to see if he can get it. I'm not going to say... I think it was Daniel Huffman who said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to say keep it up. Because you're, you're, you're getting close. You're getting close. Yeah, he's getting closer. <laughs> Come on, Daniel. What do you think it is? It's not the ranchy. Please do. You're driving us nuts. Victorian. Nope. Oh, man. This is... This is... This is painful. It is a P&O liner. It was sunk in the Second World War. <laughs> First person to get it gets a gets a cheers, gets a round of applause. See, Daniel, Daniel got it. There we go. Roll Pindy, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Ocean Liner Roll Pindy, which, uh, in, in, incredibly engaged two German battleships. I think I've mentioned this uh, last week's stream, last week's stream, and of course was sunk. But it's just a fascinating, fascinating story because the ship, you know, I mean, they, they had a, they were done, like, I don't even think they could outsteam the Scharnhorst and the Gneisenau, the two German ships. They were, they're in a lot of trouble. That looks like 80 ships. Yeah, well, I told you it was going to be a challenge. Gee, if it was easy, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> So some of the um some of the the ship that fought Scharnhorst ignites now. That's right, Frederico. Yeah, you got it. Good job, Daniel. Nailed it. Yeah, D Daniel was kind of onto it from the start. A lot of you guys were getting close. When some of you said Multan, I was getting a bit nervous, but Daniel was going kind of m with more esoteric and obscure P and O ships, and I thought for sure he was going to get this. And someone said Viceroy of India, and that was very close as well. Um. You can see like that that tower kind of bridge with the wheelhouse on top of the the bridge there. That's classic P and O. The extended superstructure out to the well deck here with with a whole bunch of cargo um, hatches. Very P and O Eastern service. Um, that classic bow of like a you know an Edwardian steamer, right? Combined with the twin funnel layout like this. The reading and writing room, someone picked that as being like a 1920s era ship, nailed it. But then what the absolute dead giveaway, always with these P&O ships from this era, is like three or four cargo hatches aft of the main, the main funnels. So one, two, three, four cargo hatches, and then a cruiser stern. And like any P&O ship built from like 1920 to 1929 kind of looked exactly like that. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'm glad. I knew it. I knew it would. Uh, I knew it would get you. That was fun. Britannic fan says ocean liner designs. That's me. Hi, it's my first live stream. And uh, your what if Britannic never sank video inspired me to write my own what if Britannic never sank. Keep up the great work. Very cool. Very cool. Did you sink it as well? A lot of people were very unhappy that I sank it and didn't have it preserved as a museum. Cedric Zombie says we need the blueprints for the Johan Van Holden Barnfeld too. <laughs> yeah, Transit Bike has got it, got it dead right. The PO ships have that signature storage for the long voyage, but also lots of sunlight. Yeah, tons of skylights in, um, lots of promenades. It's very interesting. How do you spell Raoul Pindi? R A W A L P I N D I. Raoul Pindi. I, I may not even be saying that right. Question, if you could go on a voyage of any ship from any era, what would it be? I would uh, sail aboard the Hellenic Prince. Just kidding. <laughs> well, guys, what do you think we um, fire up Photoshop and try and improve an ocean liner? We we'll probably stream for another, uh, another 15 minutes or so. What do you guys want? What do you guys, what are you thinking? What, um... What ship are we going to improve? I'll give you guys a second to come up with some come up with some answers here. We're gonna go we're gonna go big. We're going Oh no, that's too big. We're gonna go two thousand. <laughs> we we're we're doing it. We're doing it live. We'll uh, we'll improve a ship. Give me names. Give me names, guys. What do you want? <laughs> the Achille Lauro. The Achille Lauro is already pretty pretty good. The SS motorboat. The, the Oriana? No, come on. Really? The Oriana? That's like the third Oriana I've seen. Maybe I will have to do the Oriana. If there's one more Oriana, there's another Oriana. All right, well, I guess we're fixing the Oriana. Eddie Aviation says, Hey, Mike, love your content. Have you seen the transformation of the Costa Romantica into the Costa Neo Romantica? It's one of the ugliest ship makeovers I've ever seen. I've not. Let's have a look. Ugh. Can't spell. The twin funnels are, are interesting looking. That's, are they twin funnels? Quadruple funnels, what's going on here? Oh, oh my, I'm gonna, I just saw a super chat come in. I'm gonna let you guys look at that for a minute. Uh, Road Weary, hey Road Weary, how are you buddy? He says, another live stream, another coffee. Hello Mike from Boston. Oh, good to see you man, thank you. Mm. You know, it's the coffee that fuels me, man. Good to see you. Thanks so much. The kitchen knife. The kitchen knife. Oh, man. Taylor Lewis says, what are some of the other ships you'd like to do alternate uh, timeline video for? I've uh, spoken about this in some of my other streams, but my idea for the Olympic is um, to turn the Olympic into essentially a uh, floating anti-aircraft platform uh, defending the Tirpitz in World War II. In my alternate reality, the ship is sold, uh, sorry, bought by a French, uh, French company to turn into a hotel and that falls through. So during the Nazi occupation of France, the rotting hulk of the Olympic is captured and turned into a barracks ship through the forties in preparation for operation sea lion. And then when that falls through, she's converted into a floating flak platform. The, the funnels are cut off and replaced with, um, you know, platforms for 88s and flak veerlings, 20 millimeter anti-aircraft guns. And I haven't figured out yet, but probably before that happens, she operates under her own steam to go to Trondheim, go up to Norway in the fjords and uh, protect the tail pits. And then she is sunk alongside the tail pits by a Lancaster bomber. That's my, that's my alternate history <laughs> for the Olympic. No, no ship will get away unscathed. I have to sink them all. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a failure, says. What's your opinion of the SS City of New York? Oh, so pretty. Yeah, 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 so pretty. Um, that whole generation of ships was stunning. Um, there's a, a, a fella on my Patreon, and he's an Ocean Liner Designs crew member, um, who, who absolutely love these, Air Wicker. Let's have a look at... Oh, I have to sign in. Oh, damn. Lucas Gustafsson is a, is a great uh, 3D modeler. I've been working with him recently. You know, he had a beautiful model of the city of New York. But yeah, she's, she's a beautiful ship. I mean, that is an eye-achingly beautiful looking ocean liner. I wish one of these survived. 
We, why don't we, we could all like chip in and turn this into the ocean liner designs, uh, crew yacht, you know, take it on voyages. Okay. Everyone's, everyone's, um, in visual pain because of this ship. Whoever recommended this one, you're a, you're, you're a monster. All right, let's come on. Let's do the, the we're going to do uh, the Oriana because so many of you guys were, were, were talking about it a little earlier. We want to get, we want to get nice. I mean, that's a good shot, I guess. Let me try this one. All right, let's go bigger. Mm -hmm. Does it get bigger? No, I guess not. Okay. Nope, didn't want to do that. <laughs> I mean, uh, really? You really want me to fix this thing? Look at it. It's so pretty. Aww. Okay. Just so you know, I already love the Oriana, okay? This is like, I have such a deep, deep affection for this ship. So you really, it's like making me, it's like making someone look at their child and say, how would you fix your child? You know? Can't. Let's do it. Okay. So what we're going to do, I guess, if I had to fix a <laughs> anything, it would be these kind of silly looking funnels. So we're going to get rid of this real quick. Dun, dun, dun. I hope you guys are listening to music. So this isn't just me awkwardly sitting here. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Oh, damn. Um, it's not me just awkwardly sitting here uh, talking. Go put on some, uh, go put on Jack Hilton and his orchestra. There you go. Okay, so we're just kind of going to get rid of that. And this is probably not going to be anywhere near as good as... <laughs> now the pressure's on, just watch. It's not going to be anywhere near as good as the Johan van Olden Barnevelt 2. I'll just make the sky look a little less unnatural. Um, okay, so what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is we, we take that flying bridge and bring that and put that in a more traditional spot, right? So we're going to put it like around here. And um, I will smoothen that out in a sec. That's better. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this, which is actually a fairly beautiful looking bridge structure in my humble opinion. Um, and I, even, I love the windows beneath it as well. I'm going to take this. And I'm going to put it about there okay um you know what this is purely for aesthetics okay so yeah we're deleting some cranes <laughs> we're hampering the the function of this ship uh significantly but we are making it just look better that's all we're trying to do um just before i go on uh i am going to read was that another super chat uh, Erika Itsumi, yeah. Would Voyage of Despair be more more appropriate appropriate if it was Olympic during World War One with her dazzle scheme? Given that Call of Duty already already has several World War One themed zombie ma zombie maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. Yeah, Pro probably. I think you know, having a crack at a peacetime disaster is is pretty horrendous. Um, especially, yeah. I don't know. I know it's been a long time, but come on. I um, it's like those Titanic fairground slides that you see with people kind of just sliding down them. It's like an, a, a, an amusement park ride. It's like such poor taste, you know? Okay, well, we're just going to add the sky back in so this doesn't look too janky. I'm going to put a little cloud in here. Oh, that was the wrong color. Oh, I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put that smoke. We don't need to worry about that. I'm going to add noise. Uh, oh. oh, that's too much. Oh, that's too much. Not monochromatic. Yeah, okay, perfect. Okay. <clears throat> so that's already starting to look a little... A little more like your traditional liner. I know, I know how to make you all happy. It's just to make any ship that looks a little unorthodox look like... I should just... You know what? I know how to, I know how to make this look... Here's, here's what... I know this is what you guys want. I know this is what you want. This is all I need to do. I'm going to take this... Take that. There we go. <laughs> tell me that's tell me that's not what you wanted me to do from the start. That's all I needed to do. Done. Done. Well, guys, this has been great fun. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. Um, <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. 
I knew you'd like this. Look at this. I knew it. Zane Woodall says, Hey Mike, any updates on the Lusitania history game that you're working on with Tom Linsky? Um, it's coming. It's coming. I can't tell you exactly when, and I can't tell you how or why, but it is coming. I'm just seeing a million comments. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew this is what you guys would would, uh, would want to see. That's all it takes. Sorry, Zane. Yeah, I haven't got more of an update for you, man. But I'm sure Tom's going to give you an update soon, all right? This is so funny. Oh, Sam from Historic Travels is here. Oh, Sam. Look at, look at my most recent creation, man. Do you like her? It's the Oritanic. In fact, I'm going to go and fix that nameplate up in a second. Craig Peter says, I have an alternate history of Olympic where she's never scrapped despite the fact she's over the hill. It was inspired by your story about the, about the Medina. Love the content, Mike. Thanks so much, man. Yeah. If only. Oh, I'd love to go and see that ship if, if she wasn't scrapped. <laughs> Just makes me sad, you know, that the British were so quick to, um, to scrap their ships, you know. Oritanic. Uh, we're going to make that font a little smaller. Where'd it go? There we go. Okay. <laughs> I promise. I promise when this is done, we will actually go and make this look like a normal a normal ship, right? I've just got to find a nice little... That's close enough. <laughs> Times New Roman. I feel like I'm committing a crime doing this. This is terrible. Uh, we're going to get this a little smaller. Perfect. I'm going to make this bold as well. What do you think? Bold. This is how I spend my time. That's a pretty close match, huh? I'm going to put that there. Drop that there. Make it darker. I don't know you do. I'm just going behind it. Do, do, do. Perfect. Here we go. Makes that a little bit of noise. Amazing. Truly superb. <laughs> I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> Charles Chris says, Hello, Mike from North Dakota. Love your channel. Huge Titanic fan. Um, ever considered doing more shipwrecks on Lake Superior? Um, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, big time. You know, the Great Lakes, again, never realized how, how big how big the, the lakes are. It's unbelievable. Um, I, I would love to do a little more. Love to do a little more on, on that part of the world. It's such a cool part of the world. Um, duly considered. I'll, let me think about that and, and see, what I can, see what I can do. Robert uh, Dennett says, if Mauritania was in the same spot as the Carpathia and took the same steps, could she get there in time? And how fast could she make if pushed as hard? That's, you know, that's a really good point. She could probably hit about 26 knots. Full clip. I wonder if she'd get there in time. I might have to crunch the numbers on that. Because I know the, um, the, the, the actual distance was miscalculated um, in Titanic's, um, you know, in the, in, the, in the log and the position they took. So maybe, maybe not. This is a ship deserving of death. You know, I wanted to actually fix up the Oriana, but um, I just realized the time I have to finish at half past and my camera is about to run out of battery. So I think this is as good as it's going to get. <laughs> I can't believe I genuinely. So, okay. I, all right. Listen. Whoa. Whoa. What's going on? Oh, I didn't like that. I will come back to this. I do, I do have to end the stream in a couple minutes because, again, my, my camera is going to die, unfortunately. But we will come back to this. I will stream again next week. Let me just get rid of this mast here because we don't, we don't need that mast. Oh, there we go. The camera died, guys. So sad. I'll put on my, uh, my other camera just to say goodbye. I got a, I've got a webcam here. Um, but it is going to look real silly. Yeah, it doesn't really like my green screen that much. 
let me hang on a minute. Let me just so long as you so long as you don't mind like how bad this this webcam looks, um, we can probably maybe finish the Oriana off. What do you think? Let me just finish cropping it. 150. 280. There we go. All right. Perfect. I'm gonna stay down here. Oh, that looks fine. I know it's a little bit it's a little bit funny. It's not quite right, but okay. Now the Oritanic is good, um, but we are, I, I set out, I set out to improve the Oriana and by Jingo, I'm going to do it. Okay. So, all right, that's enough of this rubbish. Where's the, let's get rid of these funnels. No, nope. Wrong layer. Nope. Wrong layer. Where are the funnels? Okay. There we go. Get rid of that. Um, get, get rid of Oritanic. I can't believe you guys let me do that. <laughs> No, we are going to we are going to fix this. Um, there was one P&O ship that had the prettiest funnels of all time, and that's the SS Iberia. So I wonder if we can find a color photo of Iberia and give her Iberia's funnels. What? Oh, oh, that looks pretty good. They're, just, they're not at the right angle. That's a little more like it, huh? Oh yeah, that'll do. Look at this. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. All right. So we're going to cut out Iberia's funnel here. We're going to put it behind the Ari the um, Ariana. Maybe scale them down a little. So she had like kind of one there. And then... Maybe like a second one? Oh, it does still kind of look misproportioned, huh? <laughs> I don't think... Hang on, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. No, hang on, I'm not done with the placement here. Don't, don't crucify me for doing this just yet. Okay, so we're going to bump the saturation up so they look yellow. Yeah, okay, traffic cone. They're pretty... Come on. Hey, hey, listen. Don't, don't you guys start making fun of Iberia. That is a, that is a beautiful looking ship. That is a beautiful ocean liner. Come on. That is a beautiful ship. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I made them too saturated. Let's drop that down a little. Okay. No, it just looks like a container ship now with, with funnels. And that just looks cursed. Gee, three funnels doesn't work. What do you think it is? Are they too... It's like they're too small. You need like... <sighs> they need to be bigger. Like fatter, maybe? A little squatter like that? Oh, that's a little better. Yeah. Maybe... <clears throat> this is tricky. No, still not. Still not. Is my face going on the funnels? I feel like that's a tradition that needs to be upheld. <laughs> still not quite. Still not quite. And I think it may be this bridge that's kind of throwing me off. Like, that needs to be there. That needs to be there. Okay. Maybe, like, a tiny bit back? Yeah. Radar mast? They look like lighthouses. All right, maybe maybe Iberia's funnels just weren't the right choice. You know? That one's got to be smaller. I thought this would look really good. In my mind, it looked really good. In reality, though. That one's too small now. It's just not worked out. <laughs> no, that looks terrible. Um, oh, What's going on? Why doesn't this work? That should work, right? Does it just, does it just need, oh man. Like one big funnel. <laughs> no. I think they're just a little too small. Now, nah, let's go back a minute. Okay, hang on, wait a minute. Wait a minute, let's make these a little bit fatter. Put that one there, right? 
I'm not even reading the comments now because this is just annoying me. Like, I want this to look good. I just cannot get it there. Put one there. Maybe one. It does work? Are you sure? Oh, that looks better. Huh? That looks a little better. All right. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now it kind of looks like a sleek, one of the, you know, like one of the German liners from the 30s, a little bit. Put five funnels and call it the Great Eastern 2. <laughs> um, I think what is also throwing me off is um, the aft superstructure here. So let's play around with this a little bit. That, we're going to step it down a little bit more and make it just a little bit more um, elegant. Where am I going? Here we go. Okay, yep, that's fine. We're going to put that there. Just got rid of that crane because, again, none of this is for functionality. This is purely for looks. I could probably do a better job of cutting the funnels out like this. 12 funnels. Evan Osland uh, says 12 funnels. So we're going... We're <laughs> We, we should Disney-ify this ship. <laughs> we should give it like 40 funnels. Okay, that's a little better, huh? That's a little better. I think, I think, oh. I think chilling out the superstructure aft and stepping that has made it look nicer. Um, skinnier and taller. You want the funnels taller? You think? Like, oh, no, yeah. That actually does look better. That actually does look better. Yeah, that does look nice. And then what we'll do, what we'll do is get rid of this as well. We'll just delete that. Maybe we'll bring that. Oh. Uh, we'll bring that down, right? So we'll put that like there, okay? So we knock off a whole layer of that wedding cake of a stern. And then what I'm going to do after this, we've got a, uh, a couple of renders to show from one of the Ocean Liner Designs patrons, um, who is a brilliant uh, Minecraft ship modeler. And for once, it is not back out and join. I'm sorry, Prince Organ. But we are going to be showing Skittery Fibers renders in just a moment. I'm going to take some windows from maybe like, maybe up here. I'm going to take those. I'm going to put those Kind of like there, just to continue some kind of little... That could be like an observation lounge kind of thing. Okay. Maybe like chuck some noise on the funnels here. So it blends in. No, that's too much. Okay. I mean... I mean... You know, it's... it's not at all cohesive with the rest of um, the, the the lineup for P&O of that era. Oh, my green screen is driving me nuts. Sorry. I, I, this... <laughs> That's done it. Now I don't have any hair. There we go. Okay, I fixed it. I fixed it. Sorry, I should have done that earlier. Nope. Nope. There we go. That's what I was looking for. It's not an Ocean Liner Design stream. Say it with me, kids. It's not an Ocean Liner Design stream. Unless something goes wrong. And do we need a radar mast? Do we need a radar mast? Let's um, let's see what that looks like. Um, let's take QE2s. Um, let's take QE2's radar mast. That's not exactly what we want, that angle. It's got to be a little shallower. Mmm, that's the angle we want. Yep. Sorry, Alamy. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna borrow part of this uh, part of this image. Whoops! <laughs> I kind of love it. I kind of love it. I really like it. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. I think we just accidentally Qnartified. Uh, 
<laughs> I didn't mean to do that. That's cool though. I kind of dig it. Although again, it just feels lazy. You can't just take like all of the QE2 and slap it on the Oriana. We're just taking the, the radar mast. No, we're sticking with our, our two funnel design because it's cool. All right, listen, look at that. <laughs> oh, now by comparison, this just looks bad. Oh. Chuck a radar mast on the front there. Why does that look so... Ugh. Now let's maybe brighten this up a bit. There's... Th <laughs> Ryan. Ryan's like, bleh, unsubs. <laughs> oh yeah, everything on here should have a... Kind of like a yellow filter applied to it because the rest of the photographs got that... Got that yellowing of old photographs, you know? That'll do. Put some put some noise on that as well. Blend it in. I'm still not thrilled with it. Do they need to be further apart? Oh, that's actually looking a little better. I think maybe they just need to be a little smaller. The funnels are driving me nuts. It's not quite right, you know? It's still not quite there, is it? This one's actually a little harder to do. Maybe I'll just delete a little bit more superstructure. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. What about this here? Maybe this just needs to kind of like go away as well. That's a little better, huh? Ryan Weasley. Now it looks bad. It didn't look great to start. Wow. <laughs> She's such a pretty ship. Come on, man. There we go. It's better. It's better. It's it's getting there. We'll just kind of sell the illusion that this is actually just a deck house. This is just the front of a deck house by slapping on a little bit of shade there. Actually, that's not at all what I wanted to do. Let me do that. There we go. Hmm, interesting. Again, actually, you know what? You know what? These uh, boats, I think I'm not very much enjoying their location. I think what we do is bring, give it a whole new promenade deck and bring those boats down. Maybe we try that. All right. Yeah. Very roughly cut this out real quick. Nope. Put them like there. Which means, um, behind the ship, we're going to take this promenade deck here and like, I can't, I don't want to put a promenade, uh, like, cause th that's just going to look a little, uh, now it just looks like one of the, uh, Holland America ships or like the, the Dutch ships of the fifties and the sixties. I can, I can, I can dig that. I'll just add a little more promenade up here. And there. Get rid of that. I think we're getting somewhere, guys. I think this is looking good. That after funnel can probably go back. Well, no, no, no. Don't do that. That can go back there so it's sitting a little more on the deck house. That can go down a bit. Two boat decks, yeah. Do you guys like it? I, I can dig this. I can dig this a bit more now. Um... Again, originally I already liked I already liked the ship. But I think this this is just just it enough. Do you like it? It's a little different. I think maybe this deck house is 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 maybe just a little bit too um a little bit too big. Uh we might just bring that in. Um lower it a bit. There. Get rid of that. Yep. You can go there. And then you can go away as well. Delete that. Yeah. You know, that's... That's kind of working for me a little better. I mean, it's no Oritanic. <laughs> you know what? I think we've done it. I th by Jove, I think we've done it. Now we just need to give her a little, a little smoke. 
because of course this is now an express steamer so the uh, both of the funnels are functional uh, we'll go to there's a little smoke not too much I'm gonna, they're gonna like just come in with the with the brush here and then delete that mm. yeah just a wisp just a hint of smoke all right you know what guys I think we fixed the Orion. <laughs> Where's the, uh, let's go get the original just to, just to stack it up. And then I'm going to show you guys, uh, skittery fibers stuff. Okay. Here we go. We'll line these up. Okay. Original. Fixed. Original. Fixed. Kind of, kind of fixed. It's not, again, the funnels, they're still not quite right. I don't know if it would take me a little while to kind of like look at these. I don't, I think short is better than bigger. I think that's good. Um, I think I missed a couple super chats because I was so like fixated on doing this. Road Weary says it looks like this was built next to a nuclear reactor. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Um, it's worse for sure. Wow. Okay. I did my best. I did my best. <laughs> where is my face oh, I, oh, come on no, we're not slapping my face on this one as well surely jpod07 says hello my friend from another state congratulations on your channel thank you you've been doing great I've got some news on the project awesome talk soon Jordan oh Jordan oh man I didn't even recognize your um your username oh man that's exciting good to see you dude hope you're doing alright um yeah looking forward to seeing how your movie is going I'm sure the documentary is going to be absolutely spectacular Okay. Everybody likes the original better. This this has been a little um, a little contentious. This one. You know what? Maybe I don't. I will show you Skittery Fibers renders in just a sec. Maybe we can. Oh no. Maybe we if we add a little a little superstructure color, a, a little hull color. I think um, I'm not a big fan of white uh, white hulls. I'll be honest. Let's. Just quickly see what this looks like. Oh. Oh, now that's pretty. Come on. That looks like um, like the sister ship to Bremen or something. Or, or Europa. Huh? Huh? Come on. You can't deny that looks pretty now. Now it literally just looks like a <laughs> literally just looks like one of the German liners. <laughs> Dark blue. Mmm, that wasn't dark enough. Yeah, something like that. So funny, all it needed was um a little hull colour. I'll just give it a little. Do you guys like the black or the blue better? That's actually fairly pretty. I do like that. That is very nice. The dark hull gives it an Andrea Doria look. Yeah, it is. We basically just turned it into one of the the North German Lloyd ships. Keep the hull black. All right, we'll just drop the saturation in this. There we go. Yeah, that is literally it. Did we really just do that? Was it Oi Roper or Bremen? What was the later uh, MV uh, Bremen? No, that was not what I was looking for. Yeah, that that era. Yeah, North German Lloyd. Let's have a look. Mm, none of these. It's not, you know, the one I'm talking about, right? It's like the, the 50s or 60s version. Purple. Please add wings. Please add wings to the funnels. 
change the funnel color to what? Add wings? <laughs> mm, that was the wrong color. Sorry, guys. Uh, let's do this real quick. Okay, I'm going to stop doing this in a second because this is this is just getting out of control now. Just because otherwise it just looks too much like one of the North German Lloyd ships. It's kind of cool. What if we gave it black funnel tops? Hmm. Drop the brightness on that. I still think I liked it with the um, with the golden funnel. Charles says, "Okay, I admit it. It's not as it's not as bad as it could have been." Oh, <laughs> uh, that's it without without the wings. I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. Okay, well, you know what? Consider, hey, look, you can screenshot this a million times and there's already like 50 versions that look better. Personally, I think um, the without the wings, with the, I look, I love Iberia. I, I, I'm a real sucker for Iberia's funnels. So I'm going to say that even though it just looks like a blatant North German Lloyd ripoff, I'm going to say this is my favorite iteration of our redesigned Oriana. Get the Johan van Olden Barnevelt's funnels. <laughs> Please change the funnel color to crimson red. Then it's just going to look like French line, eh? Um, do we go hue and saturation? Uh, no. Crimson red. Yeah, and if you made those funnel tops black, I'll do it really simply now. Uh, that would just look like a French line ship. Whoops. Oh, jeez. Drop that down. Yeah, see? It's like the SS France 3. <laughs> no, no, I'm purist. Sorry, that's it. Done, done. Oriana, um, I don't think we improved it. I just think we made it look different. Original? After. Original? After. There you go. I think it's, uh, it was, it was, it's not bad. Now look, um, I, <laughs> look at that. Let's, that side, look at that. Why is it, why is it not, you know what? I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to, uh, just fire up, um, Discord real quick and show you guys, uh, some renders by Skittery Fiber because he has been making some, some cool stuff. Let me just go find these. Do, 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 do. So, um, What's funny about uh, Skittery and Prince Eugen and, and the gang um, that make these ships is that um, they uh, have a, a burning, burning, deep-seated hatred for the Olympic class, like the Titanic, the Olympic, and so on. Um, and yet they've got some of the nicest-looking Minecraft renders of the Olympic class that Skittery's made up here. So I'm just going to fire these up for you. Um, you guys are going to love seeing this. Okay, here we go. Um, did I already get that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, here we go. How cool. So um, here we've got Nomadic steaming out to Olympic by the looks of it. That's Olympic in a 1911 configuration. And uh, yeah, this was all made in Minecraft and then rendered out. The, the, the real life looking ocean does a lot, does a lot to add to the scene. Isn't that beautiful? That's also my favorite angle of Olympic that when she's like viewed from a stern like that, you really get the, the angle of the funnels there, the rake, and they, they look absolutely spectacular. And um, that is a very faithful recreation of Nomadic as well. I've actually um, visited Nomadic. It's really funny seeing a real life historical ship and, and walking through. So those gangway doors and these little cutouts in the hull, you walk straight through them and you stand on the, um, on the boat deck and in the promenade deck. Oh man, it's so, so cool. Isn't that beautiful? 
Skittery in the chat, could you tell the folks what you actually do to render these? Because I actually don't know. Uh, I don't know like what program you're porting this into. A nice little detail here is the tiny, tiny whiff of smoke uh, coming out of the fourth funnel, um, which tells me that lunch is being cooked. <laughs> Someone's down in the galley cooking lunch. You, you imagine the roaring fireplace in the, uh, in the first class lounge is going on. Isn't it cool? So yeah, nice, nice little details in this. And then we've got this little beauty. Uh, this is the Lusitania. This is her in her sea trials configuration. So this is Lusitania on her uh, on her sea trials, stretching her legs for the first time. So detailed is this uh, is this Minecraft model that you can see the aerial spreaders here. So this is for the antenna for the wireless and to keep the wires apart because if they touch, that's bad news. Um, they have these things called aerial spreaders. You can see them on power lines in your home city, like everyone still uses them. But he's even included the aerial spreader for the, the antenna leads here that go down from the wireless antenna down into the wireless office. And he's actually put the antenna spreader on that, which is really cool. Oh, what am I doing? The, the, the layout of this ship's spectacular. Like, and, and this is very, very authentic to what uh, Lusitania looked like on her trials. They basically deleted that white chunk of, of painted hull and just made it black all the way up to the forecastle, which I think is a bit of a shame because I think it was a pretty looking ship with the uh, with the white the white stripe going all the way down there. That is a very beautiful looking ship, hey? What a stunning render! You really get a sense of the speed as well because you've got the smoke going. Uh, and it looks like she's really moving along. I think we've got another Lusitania shot here, and this is her in 1915. And that isn't smoke; it's steam. Oh, no, it's 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 smoke because you got all the the boilers down there um you know chewing coal up that's that's coal smoke you know what i mean like that is some that is some stuff that is some that is some thick smoke like pretty brutal here's the lusitania uh, in in what she may have looked like during wartime and um there's a couple of interesting things about this like the the uh the the color scheme has changed a lot they've obviously darkened out the funnels whether this was a gray color or a black color um people have been debating on the internet because People will literally debate about anything on the internet. The the forward the forward uh, anchor crane here, whether that was painted black or this this interesting kind of buff buff color, but I actually kind of like it. But it, it just looks a lot like the um, the liners from eighteen ninety nine, the Prometheus and the Kerberos, <laughs> because of course they were based on the Lusitania those ships. But regardless, very pretty looking render. Um, here is a ship that is horribly underrepresented in, in pop culture shipdom. It is the Vaterland. I say Vaterland and not Vaterland because in the videos that I made talking about the Ballin Trio, uh, a lot of German speakers were absolutely outraged that I mispronounced the word, uh, Vaterland. Pretty cool, huh? Um, so this ship... I think I've mentioned this before. Some of you guys may know I'm not the biggest fan of the exteriors of, of uh, the, the ball and trio. I think it's kind of unbalanced and very, um, it looks like a factory, a floating factory almost. But um, regardless, beautiful render, beautiful model, and really interesting seeing those lifeboats inset into the superstructure there. It's quite unique so that passengers could get more uh, outdoor, you know, uncovered promenade space. It's quite clever. Pretty cool, huh? And then we've got two more. We've got the Britannic here. What I really like about this is once you don't have a black hull on your uh, ship model, here you can really see the artistry that's involved in a in a Minecraft modeler getting the, the curve of the hull. So I'm pretty sure Skittery and Prince Eugen and his mates use um, the, the ship's plans, so the lines plans, the hull plans, um, to get those lines exactly right and it looks really cool i mean it's it's beautiful that it shows how complex these shapes were this is the titanic's uh sister ship the britannic as i'm sure many 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 of you already know and it just looks like look you know if it weren't <laughs> if it weren't made in minecraft it would look like a photo you know it's so cool i love this stuff 
I really don't have the the patience to do any of this myself, like modeling like this. So cool. He's even got the nameplate there. Um, yeah, beautiful model. And the last render I'm sure you guys are really going to like, and this is a nice way to, to end the stream, I think, is all three sisters sitting sitting side by side. Which one is your favorite? Which one looked the best? I'm a um, I'm an Olympic guy. Like I love that open promenade, running all the way up a deck, and the, and the B deck promenade. I think she's a very pretty looking ship, very balanced. Britannic. I mean, they're all they're all slightly different, of course. But uh, no, I, I think Olympic was like the most balanced looking ship of the three. So there you go. Well done, Skittery. Thank you very much for sharing those, mate. I'm glad we could finally show them off on stream, as was promised many months ago. Guys, look, this has been a this has been a fun stream. We've we've um, attempted to fix the Oriana. Um, just I'm gonna look at it fresh because I haven't seen it for a few minutes because we've been looking at Skittery's renders. Yeah, that's literally just a North German Lloyd ship. Okay. <laughs> It is the Oriana. What's what would be the German equivalent of Oriana? I don't even know. Oh, I know. Wait a minute. Dun, 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 dun. Die Oriana. Yeah. Genau. It just reminds me of that Simpsons bit where he's like, it's not die Bart, it's the Bart. The. <laughs> die Oriana. Willkommen auf die Oriana. This is like when I did, I don't know if you guys ever saw my uh, my April Fool's gag last year where I did a video about the Olympic, but it was actually the uh, the Kronprinzess in Cecilia. And I had to record my lines in German. Name name needs to be, oh yeah actually oh maybe that would look cool, like one of those old signs they used to do back in the day, um, like what am I doing? Oriana, like one of those Art Deco signs. I get that there. This is the last thing I'm doing. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I think you're right. I think this is going to look good. Here we go. Layer style. Uh, stroke, stroke, stroke. Yep. Too much, too much, too much. That's good. Put that there. And then what we do is duplicate this layer. Put it behind that one. And then... Rasterize... Oh, I actually could have just put a drop shadow on. That's all right. Make it look a little 3D. And we put those behind, mostly behind the hull. Do, do, do. Oh yeah, that'll do. Cute. Oh, I messed it up. <laughs> I forgot to put a space after. That's okay. I'll do that real quick. Look. Uh, layer, layer style. Drop shadow. Where's drop shadow? That's what we want. Yeah. Uh, why is it all the way over there? What are you doing? Yeah, it's better. Perfect. There we go. The Oriana. Mm. Es ist ausgezeichnet. <laughs> well guys oh Hylian Batman says I used the right um, the right the instead of saying das Oriana for example die Oriana because it's feminine there you go no German classes here folks just making it up as I go this has been a lot of fun I'm glad we we did this again this is good I actually the more I look at this the prettier it gets I'm, I'm a big fan of this ship I think it's good the bridge still needs a refit Okay, maybe next time. Nothing beats the Oritanic. Yeah, you're right. Well, <laughs> I guess we'll end on the Oritanic. As always, guys, this has been a lot of fun. I, um, I'm i going to try streaming this time every week. Uh, just get into the habit of it. Maybe not over Christmas, obviously, but maybe into the new year. 
But look, if we don't talk till Christmas time, um, have a wonderful holiday. If you don't celebrate Christmas, have a great holiday period. Happy Hanukkah. Um, just enjoy yourselves, see family, get out and, and enjoy, enjoy, um, enjoy the holiday period. It's nice and sunny down here. So I'm going to be seeing my family, my brother and um, his kids are moving down from Ireland. So I can't wait to see my nephews again. Um, there's like, imagine these little four or five year olds with thick Irish accents. Um, they call me Uncle Moiki. It's very funny. They're like, Uncle Moiki, we're out at the park feeding the ducks. <laughs> uh, and it makes me crack up laughing every time. They're so cute. But guys, have a great holiday. Um, thanks so much for joining. Thanks so much for a huge year. I can't believe it. I can't believe we got to 100,000 subs. I can't believe that I get to do this for a job. It's really living the dream. So thank you so much, guys. It's all because of your, your support. Maybe next time we'll improve the Hellenic Prince. Although I don't think there's any power on this earth that could improve the look of that ship. <laughs> I'm gonna um, put this in full screen. No, that's too ugly. I'm gonna put this in full screen <laughs> and I'm gonna disappear off screen, but um, have a wonderful holiday guys. See you again. Bye-bye.